Hi, I'm Tim and welcome back to the second part of my video series for the GeoINet Comet KVM and also the Fingerbot accessory which we'll be setting up and installing on my GMK Tech Mini PC. So let's get to it, get them set up and installed and then I'll take you into the web interface on the computer and I'll show you how to remotely control your computer whether that be locally or remotely from a different part of the world. So let's get to it. So here we are with the Comet PoE KVM. So what we'll do is with the USB-C to A cable here, I'll be connecting the USB-A end into the back of the GFK Tech Mini PC here. Then with the USB-C end, we'll connect that into the USB-C port here on the back of the KVM. So then with the HDMI cable, we'll connect one end into the back of the GMK Tech into the HDMI port. Then the other end of the HDMI into the HDMI in on the KVM. Then with the USB-A dongle, we'll connect this into the back of the KVM, into the USB-A port. So this is the dongle for the Fingerbot. Then we'll peel off the backing. So the protective film on the back of the Fingerbot. We'll open it up using the recess and then we'll activate the Fingerbot using the test button inside. So if you press it once, you'll see that the arm swings out. Press it again, it presses harder. Third press, it retracts the arm. So we'll press it once. We'll move it manually slightly. Then we'll line it up with the lid put back on. So we'll put the lid on first, line it up onto the power button on the GMK Tech, release the lid and then retract the arm manually using the test button inside. We'll power off the GMK Tech and we'll put the lid back on onto the Fingerbot and then what we'll do finally is connect the Ethernet cable here which is supplying PoE into the back of the KVM and this will then turn the light blue on the KVM. Hopefully you can see that. So it turns solid blue, then it flashes white, and then in a second it will go to solid white. So that means it can now be accessed remotely over the network or remotely from a different part of the world. So that's all set up now. Fingerbot in place, KVM all connected up. So what we'll do now is go to the computer and we'll access the KVM locally over my network and I will show you how to set it up to access it remotely using their cloud service. So we'll get to that now. And here we are at the computer. You need to log in using a web browser. Now I'm doing it on the local network. So what we need to do in the address bar is you can enter the IP address which you can obtain from your router or router or you can just enter glkvm dot local and it should take you to the login page. So what I've done is entered the IP address. Then you'll be presented with the GLINet set up your admin password. Now this is local access as I've said. So we're setting up the admin password to access the GLINet KVM. So we'll create a password and confirm the password. And then with that applied, will then be taken to the login page, as you will see. Now it's saying that there's no HDMI signal. That's because the mini PC is powered off. So to power it on, what we need to do is go into accessories. Then you'll see we've got the Fingerbot accessory popped up. Now we've got the time of half a second. Now, if you want to power on your PC longer, say for example, you have to hold the button in longer, then you can change the duration from half a second to three seconds to eight seconds. Now in my case, it just requires a short press. So we'll leave it as half a second. And then with the strength, we'll set that to lightly press because it doesn't need a firm press to power it on. It's quite a soft button. 
So with that done, all we need to do is click on press and then it will ask you to confirm that you want to press the finger bot button on the PC. So we'll click apply and then it will power on the PC and in a moment we should then be presented with a screen here. And there we go, the computer is now powering on. And as you can see, it's powered on the computer and we're now taken into the login prompt for Windows. So that's now able to remote control the computer. So if we click anywhere in the window in the center, so all we need to do is control the mouse and then type on our keyboard on our computer as we would normally, and it will interact with that computer remotely. And there we go, as you can see, it's logging in and we are presented with the Windows desktop. Now to get out of the Windows desktop and control the computer locally, so if you want to control that, all you need to do is just minimize the window and then it will take you back to your usual desktop, as you'll see, where I can interact with the computer locally. So we'll bring back up the web browser and then we've got the settings at the top. So we've got settings, option, toolbox, accessories, which is what we're in at the moment with the finger box, virtual media. So with virtual media, that will access the integrated 32 gigabyte eMMC storage. So all you do is access the files remotely. So if you want to remotely mount, say for example, a drive or folder on the local computer that you're working on, you can actually do that by clicking mount remote. So we'll close that by clicking on virtual media again. Then we've got App Center. So here you can actually download Tailscale if you want to download and use Tailscale and you can actually bind it to a device. Then we've got accessories. So here again, it's in the finger bot options. Then if we close accessories, we can go into toolbox and here you've got a clipboard. So whatever you type in this clipboard here, you can actually paste it to the remote device. Now there's also other buttons which you can control. So you can do control L, alt L and delete. Alt left and shift left. You can actually press those buttons on the remote computer by clicking these icons. You can use the left alt and tab or left alt and F4. And with this one, as I've said, control. So it's left control, left alt and delete. So if you want to exit a computer, if it's frozen on the remote computer, you would do control alt delete by clicking that. You can also set wake on LAN option, but you shouldn't actually need this if you're using the finger bot. And there's also the terminal, which you can access on the KVM. So if you click access, this will bring up the terminal access for the GeoINet KVM box. So this is the KVM and not the terminal on the remote computer. It's actually the terminal within the GeoINet KVM. And then if we go to settings, you'll see we've got settings for video so we can increase the quality. By default, it's set to medium. Um, that's, I find, OK. But if it's, um, you want better vid video quality for some reason or if the quality is not so good, then you can increase that to high, ultra high, low or medium. The mode, I would recommend leaving this as WebRTC H264 but you can actually use direct H264 as well. And then we have orientation. So you can actually rotate the screen. So there we go, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. There's also EDID settings. So if we hover over the question bar, if the resolution has been changed, but the screen does not change, try restarting the controlled computer. So you can change the resolution. Now this is set to 2560 times 1440 using 60 hertz. But if you want to change it to a different resolution, you can do. Then we've got the remote device settings. So if you want to enable the speaker on the remote device, so it's the remote computer that you're controlling remotely, you can actually enable the speaker, microphone, keyboard, show virtual keyboard. So if you click the toggle for show virtual keyboard, it will bring up an on-screen keyboard, which you can use to type on should you so wish. We've also got mouse, that's obviously enabled, so it allows us to control the mouse remotely. And then we've got show local cursor. So what it will do is show the local cursor as well, 
as the remote mouse. So as you can see, there's actually two mouse pointers there. And with system, you can actually change the device identity if you so wish. I would just recommend, to be honest, leaving these all as default as it works straight out of the box. So you shouldn't need to fiddle with anything under normal circumstances. And the color mode, so you can have it dark or, for example, light, like it's showing here now. So I prefer dark, as probably most of you do. Then you can change the time zone if you so wish. And you can also factory reset the KVM using the reset button here. If you accidentally click that, it will bring up a confirmation box in the center of the screen asking you to reconfirm that. Then there's also the network icon. So you could actually give the KVM a static IP address if you want. So you just click modify and then change the IP address details, gateway, DNS servers, and so on. Lastly, we've got the help button top here, and it shows you about GLINET KVM, help document, export log files. Then at the right hand side, we have a collapse toolbar. So it will collapse the toolbar if you want to hide that. And to bring it back, you just click the drop down arrow there in the center. Then we've got full screen option. So if you want to have it full screen, like so, you can do. Then it gives you the version number of the firmware that the uh, KVM is actually using. Then we've got the cloud service. So if you want to access this remotely somewhere else in the world, then you need to enable the cloud service, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. But then the next option is we've got security. So you can change the admin password and you can also enable two factor authentication which if you're accessing it remotely, I would certainly recommend using that option as well. Then we've got the reboot option. So you can actually reboot the KVM. And then we've also got logout. So this will log out of the KVM and close access to the computer. Then going down to the bottom right, we've got status. So it shows you that the stream is active. The keyboard is being captured. And also if we move the mouse, over the window, you'll see that the mouse turns blue green, showing that the mouse is now active. Then we've got the audio icon. So that's actually muted. And the microphone, of course, is disabled. So once they're grayed out like so, it means they're not in use or disabled. So as you can see, they're really easy to use. Options in the web interface, really clear, easy to follow. So there we have it, the GeoINet KVM. Now, it's a powerful device, but they've made it really simple and easy to use. It's just basically plug and play. So what about accessing the device remotely? Well, if we go to the other tab that I've already opened, you'll see that I've gone to www.glkvm.com and this takes you to a login. Now, what you have to do is if you don't have an account already set up, you would just click sign up now and then complete all the fields and it will give you a verification email. So once you've verified the email, you'll then have remote access to be able to log in to www.glkvm.com. I've already created an account, so I will log in and you will see that when we've logged in, it's saying no device. So what we need to do is click on add device and then select auto discover. Now you'll see it's finding our KVM device locally on our network, which we're still, of course, logged into on the other tab here, as you'll see, and it pops up with the KVM. So all you need to do is click the add button and then you need to enter the device ID. So you will find your device ID on the actual bottom of the KVM. So if you look at the KVM, obtain the device ID, enter it in the device ID box and click bind. Then it's binding device and you will see that it's now showing as successfully bind. So click done. And now you'll see we've got an icon there so that we can remotely control our computer via our GeoINet KVM from a different part of the world, provided of course you have internet access. So you can actually access this device and control it remotely via a mobile phone, tablet, or simple laptop with a web browser. So all you would do to remotely control your computer is click on the icon, and then it will remotely control that computer over the internet. 
Of course, you have to enter the local admin password again. So you have two passwords to enter. And of course, as I've said earlier, I would recommend using two-factor authentication as well. So that's how easy it is to bind it to the cloud as well as control it locally. So if we want to log out of the cloud, we just click log out in the top right corner. And then with the other tab where we're logged into the cloud option, we click log out on the cloud. So that's how easy it is to set up the Comet, POE and the Fingerbot. It's so easy to use, simple to set up. They've made it really easy to use and the features what they've included in it. I can't think of anything else that they could add to make this any better. So hope you've liked this video and also the first video. More videos coming again soon. Thanks for watching. Look after yourselves. Bye for now.